Good morning, everybody. You are listening to KTOP Radio, 1640 AM. This is the show, Utah Home Sweet Home. I am your host, Yoshi Shiraki, and today we have a very special guest, a friend of mine by the name of Nate Lambert. Nate, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm stoked to be here, Yoshi. Awesome. I am stoked to, to ask you all these questions because you have a fascinating life. I think everybody who follows you on Facebook knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know Nate Lambert, you are about to learn. Um, Nate is a world traveler, but has a massive real estate business. And so it's really fascinating to see people that are killing it in the success of business still be able to figure out systems to travel the world regularly. I think every time I check your Facebook, you're not in Utah. This is like the only time you're in Utah this year, right? Just I for my show. Just for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, awesome. All right. So what we are going to be talking about today is building a high producing real estate business as well as traveling the world because you've learned, I've seen you post um, through all your travels, you've learned a lot of great tips, how to find good deals, how to find nice places at better prices. And I have to imagine now, probably with the COVID, there's not a lot of traveling, so maybe the deals are even better? Even better. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, so let's dive into this. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Nate, when we first met, you were a professor at BYU, is that correct? I was, yep. Okay, and so how did you get your start in real estate, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, that's a great question, Yoshi. I mean, I was I was really bored. You know, uh -huh. I was like sitting in my office all day writing these research articles that nobody really reads or cares about. <laughs> and I, I did really well at it. I mean, I published seventy journal articles, wow. and five books. I was being invited to give speeches, like you know, in Australia and holy England cow, and the Middle East, up in Israel, and yeah. I mean, I, so I was traveling the world. My my research was world renowned. That is awesome. But, you know, I was just, I started hitting a point where I'm just like, man, there's got to be something more than this. Like, yes. I was living paycheck to paycheck. I was feeling like I wasn't in control of my own destiny. Like, my department chair was in control of my destiny. Yeah. So I just wanted something more. So I got, so a friend of mine actually gave me a book about real estate investing. And he's like, hey, you need to, you need to read this. And I said, no, I'm not interested. Like, yeah. My parents owned a fourplex and it didn't go too well for him. So I'm like, no, I'm not. But he, he persisted. A year later, he saw me researching how to become a millionaire. And he's like, dude, you need to read this book. And I'm like, okay, okay, I'll read it. And yeah. I, I read it and it was like, Phew. Real estate's amazing. So I kind of started my journey dabbling in some real estate nice. while I was a professor, sort of moonlighting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nice. <laughs> what book was this, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, it was the it was the the path to um the straight path to real estate. Oh nice. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. And now the rest is history. The rest is history. How long after you read that book did you quit being a professor, if you know what I'm asking? You said, I'm done. Nine to five's over. Yeah, you know, it was about it was about um, two and a half years. That's fast. So, yeah, it was like I, I got my first rental property. Yeah. And I just started getting more and more involved. I decided to get my realtor's license. And then and then I'm just like, all right, I'm done. Like Yeah. I'm out. I'm, I'm going to go and be a full-time real estate investor. Yes. So, you know, one of the things that I've fascinated me with, with you specifically, which is, uh, I'm going to prep the audience, the listeners here, is the speed of how quickly you built your success in real estate, right? And uh, that's why I was so curious to see from the time you read that book, for those of you listening, can you imagine today reading a book and in two years quitting your job? I mean, that's scary for a lot of people. Two years from now, wait, you, I'm going to try and go and do a new venture. And that was, that's what's so impressive about your story. You know, the, the part that I know is the shortness, the quickness of how you built so quickly. So you obviously have a strong mindset. Because a lot of people that don't have a strong mindset would still be doing suffering from paralysis of analysis, right? They just would still be like, I should still do that real estate thing. Two years, three years, four years later, they're still not quitting their nine to five. What, the day that you decided to quit your nine to five, 
was probably at least two weeks before, because you had to give BYU two weeks notice, mm -hmm. probably. <laughs> but the day that you decided, um, what went through your mind, if you don't mind sharing with the listeners on the, you know, because I'm fascinated by your mindset being so strong. What went through your mind when you're like, yeah, I can do this? Was it like doing your first flip, and then all of a sudden you saw how much money you could make in a flip, or what, what was that, this, that day like that you decided today? I'm going to figure out how to quit my job in X amount of days. Yeah, no, that's a great question, Yoshi. So what happened was I decided I was starting to lean towards doing this full time. Okay. And so I'm like, hey, I, I'm going to move up to Salt Lake County. Felt like there were probably more deals up there. Yeah. And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to finish up my house. So I, I maxed out every credit card I had, maxed out my 401k, trying to get this house the basement finished and, and everything renovated and ready to sell. Well, the scary thing was like Yoshi, it, it was sitting on the market for months oh. and nothing was happening. I'm like, oh man, this is not good because I already decided that I wanted to go full time. Yes. But it wasn't it wasn't happening and so then I learned one thing about real uh, about seller financing. Oh. And nice. that one little thing yeah. changed it changed everything for me. Like literally I listed the house as being willing to take seller finance offers and a few minutes, uh, I mean a few days later I had two offers. Wow. Over full price and I ended up making a hundred and nine thousand dollars. Wow. And I'm telling you like I went up in the UN is on, I mean I, I was, that, it was almost double my, my university salary. Wow. Like so yeah. two years worth in one real estate transaction. Yeah. And I, I'll never forget, I went up to the UN and, and I was just like, thanking God. Like, yes. This is so amazing, like how grateful I was. And it was that day that I'm like, hey, I am going in. I'm going to go after it. I can do this with one deal. Yes. Imagine what I could do <laughs> if I just go after this full time, you know? Yes, yes. That is awesome. Oh, man, I love that. Okay, very cool. So... You do a lot, just to be clear and correct me, I, I don't probably know everything that you do in real estate, but you flip, you're a landlord, you have rentals, um, Do you, obviously you're uh, a master of creative financing, which you just discussed seller financing. Do you do other things in real estate that I don't know about, just out of curiosity? I do some short-term rentals as well. Oh, okay, like cool. five of those, yeah. Oh, nice, nice. So, doing all of these different things, what is your favorite part of real estate? For me, it's flipping, right? I, I have rentals as well, and I flip, and I've wholesaled, but my passion, I love taking an ugly house and doing an art project on it and making it beautiful. What's your favorite part about real estate? Yeah, you know, I, I think doing the creative deals, like the seller finance deals, really helping someone who's oh, yeah. up against the wall, it's about to lose their house, their credit, they're gonna go into foreclosure, yes. get kicked out, and going in and helping someone like that, and then sometimes I'll flip it depending on the equity, sometimes I'll rent it out, but negotiating those deals and yeah. having that those creative um, situations set up I think is my favorite part. That is awesome, because truly, the more you know about how you can creatively structure a deal, the more you're able to help people, right? And and you being a creative financing master, you're probably able to help most people where a lot of, let's say, uh, not to, dis I'm a realtor, so not to discredit realtors, but a lot of real estate agents, uh, you don't learn creative financing in real estate agent school. You know, you're a realtor too, you mentioned earlier. Yeah. So um, a game changer for me too was learning the creative financing, being able to offer more opportunities to individuals who are selling their house, like you said, in potential foreclosure and all that stuff. So that's fantastic. I didn't, I didn't know that. That's awesome. I know you do a lot of creative financing, but it's always interesting to hear what someone's favorite part is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Excellent. So the question that I am excited to ask you is how, how did you grow your, your, we talked about how you, you know, how you grew your real estate business so quickly much much faster than the average person i've i've uh i'm a real estate educator um where i speak for two companies one based out of chicago one based out of canada where i'll travel the united states and 
speak on stage, and the average person suffers from paralysis of analysis. They just cannot make that change. And then when they start, it's a slow start because they don't want to make a mistake. People are fearful. Nobody wants to lose money. I don't blame them. Um, so what happens is if you don't take action, you can't fail. And if you take action, you might fail. And people don't want to fail, so the easiest, safest places to stay is don't take action. I'm fascinated by how fast you grew your success because that is not the average, that is not the normal. If you don't mind sharing, what do you think is the reason on how you grew your success so quickly as a real estate investor from reading a book as a BYU professor to where you are now happened really fast? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So I really think that you mentioned action. Yeah, just barely. That is the number one thing I think, and I'm gonna share with you a killer strategy that I think. Please. Anyone who does this, I think, is is gonna. It, it's a nice balance between being careful and taking action. I call it ready, fire, aim. <laughs> I love it. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, so in real estate, the cool thing about real estate is that you can get out of any contract as a buyer like so easily yeah and you, you just have to put a little earnest money deposit down yeah on a property and you tie that up so so a lot of people like you said get analysis paralysis yeah they just they can't really just go in and get the property right yeah so what I suggest is instead of instead of spending all your time aiming yeah and, and just not really doing anything and then the, the property's gone someone else grabbed it right what you do is ready, fire, aim. You just go in there, get it under contract yeah. first, put a little refundable earnest money deposit yeah. down, and that, Yoshi, is when you do all your due diligence, right? right. You can go and look at every little last thing in there. <laughs> right. You you know check with the check with a realtor, make sure that your after repair value is you th <clears throat> you know you can sell it for what you think you can. Yeah. Check with a you know contractor, make sure that you're you know on track with what your repair budget is. Check all that stuff. Make sure get an inspector to come out. Do all those things. Make sure it's a good deal. If it's not a good deal, then even if you just see a little crack in the sidewalk, yeah. it, and the seller's like, "Well, there's a crack every 14 inches. That's what sidewalk is." And you're like, "Well, that crack was too wide." You get your earnest money deposit back, and you move on and, and do your next deal. But the power of it is, is that once you get that initia that that inertia, yeah, you get things moving, and then and then you do that due diligence. And uh, if, if the numbers look good, then you figure out how to do it. You get the money, you <laughs> yeah. get the contacts, right? <laughs> right. I mean, that's when you make all your contacts. That's when you make things happen. When you're like, I have a deal. We got to go. We got to yeah. go. Right? <laughs> right? So a lot of people think they need to get their whole real estate team put together before yeah. they do anything. They got to have all the money for the deal before right. they... Dude, once you get that under contract, the universe is going to conspire for you to get things <laughs> yes. done. Because yes. you got a time deadline, right? When right. You do right. right. <laughs> so ready, fire, aim, maybe that is I such love a great it. principle that's helped me so much. I love it. I love it. So you see it, submit the offer. That's the fire, right? Get it under contract. Yep. And then aim, figuring out your analysis afterwards. And if it doesn't work, like you said, you get your money back. You cancel the contract, earn this money back. Um, that is, yeah, that... I think if people could understand what you just shared, there would be so many more people making offers, right? But the whole analysis, I don't know if this is good, let me go look at it again. I've already seen it five times, but I'm going to drive by one more time after work. <laughs> yeah, and they, they find out the seller isn't even interested in selling it. Yeah. Right? They spent all this time analyzing. Exactly. The seller's not even going to give it to you. Yeah, right? right, right. You spend so much time aiming, by the time yeah. you're ready to fire, the target's gone. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. awesome. When did you realize that in your business? Like, that's a, I love that because if, I think truly if people can understand what you just said, people wouldn't be hesitant on at least getting something under contract because like you said, then you can decide if you want it or not. One, if you do, then you, the, the, the world will conspire because you'll have to then go get the money and everything. But when did that click for you? I think it was pretty early on. Oh, cool. You know, getting, yeah. getting my first property or two, I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's the way to do it. Just go for it, right? Right, right. And from that point on, I mean, it's just been a game changer. It's helped me to get to, you know, over 50 rental properties. I'm flipping about 20 nice. houses every year. And and it's all because of just taking action and, and making it happen. Very cool. Very cool. 
Were you always an action taker or is that something that developed when you got into real estate? You know, I have been an action taker. I think I think uh, it got me in trouble sometimes as a professor because they want to think things through perfectly, and I'm uh -huh. just like, "Let's go, let's do it, let's <laughs> publish it." <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, that's just been one of my traits. I just go all in. I'm a little bit overzealous sometimes, but it sometimes hurts me, but it mostly helps me. Absolutely, I, I, and I would agree that the odds are probably more going to help than hurt. I feel that I'm probably an action taker too, and there's been times that it bit me in the butt but I would say most of the times it was a positive. So I think where I'm going with that is if you're listening to this and you struggle with taking action, just know the odds are in your favor if you do. Yes, you might fall down and scrape your knee, but most of the times you'll be up in the Uintas thanking God for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Well said. Yes, yes. Awesome. All right. So you are the master of creative finance, and you just shared with me, which I didn't realize that that's your favorite aspect of real estate. Just so listeners out there, you and I know what that means, creative financing, but most people probably listening have maybe heard the term, maybe not even heard the term, but they don't know what it is. Do you mind sharing one of the creative financing deals that you have structured that is one of your favorite, maybe your favorite, but one of your favorite how it, how it, you know why it was creative so people understand that absolutely so i'll i'll pre change her name to protect you know her sure. privacy but there was a lady named ann right and right. ann was like i think she was like a year and a half behind on her mortgage like mm. i don't know how they let her get this far behind but yes. they did she was in a bad spot i mean they were they were going to auction we kept checking in with her but she kept on you know Procrastinating. Procrastinating. And, and finally, she's like, oh, because we had been talking to her so much and reaching out, she's like, Nate, hey, I need your help now. So she was like $50,000 behind Ooh, on, her, yeah. on her mortgage. So we had to bring a bunch of money to the table to get her caught up. But the nice thing was, I mean, a foreclosure stays on your record for like seven years. Yeah. And so it's like we saved Anne from going through all that foreclosure process mm. and we gave her an additional seven thousand dollars wow. to get back on her feet to go nice. find a new place to live yeah you know enough for a rental deposit and a couple months rent and we literally just took her house in its present condition we had to haul a bunch of junk out and so i mean a lot of these people they just get they're so down and out they just get in a funk and they don't really think yep. of what they could do. She could have sold it on the market, but it was too late. Yep. The bank was about to take everything. And so we you know, gave her equity, we caught her up. So it was like a win, win, win. Awesome. And then, you know, and then we, we fixed it up. We added some, a bedroom or two. Yeah. And uh, we ended up selling it to someone else. Now the person we sold it to, because uh, she was still on the mortgage. Anne's name was, is still on the mortgage to this day. Yep. We're paying it on her behalf, which is further helping her credit. Right. But then we found another gentleman who was also couldn't qualify for a loan. He had a bunch of money. Yeah. But he just couldn't qualify, right? I right. think he didn't have like legal status or something. I don't know. Okay. But a uh, very successful businessman and just uh, couldn't qualify for a bank loan. And so... Um, he reached out to me and said, hey, I want this house. This is awesome. And so I'm like, all right, well, so he put $60,000 down as a down payment. Wow. Yeah, he has cash. For, for that house. And and uh, the great thing is now he is able to have home ownership. That's he owns fantastic. it to this day. And he's making payments to me, and then I make the payments to the bank, and I get to keep I think it's like four, four or five hundred dollars in in between cash flow, cash flow, fantastic. And, and uh, you know, once he refinances, we'll make you know, one hundred and ten thousand. I think. Wow, wow. So we're gonna we're gonna do great on it, and you know, Anne had Anne wins, right? So yep. it's a win for Anne. It's a win for the bank. It's a win for me. Yep. And it's a win for this gentleman who bought the house with cash. And here's one of the other funny things I'll tell you about this down payment. When we were closing, uh -huh. Yoshi, he literally brought a backpack full of actual hundred dollar bills, like sixty thousand no dollars in one hundred dollar bills. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, 
<laughs> oh my god. He's like a con I don't think it was, you know, bad money or anything. Yeah. It was just like he was a contractor and getting money. So literally just gives me sixty grand. Cash. <laughs> okay, you want me to deposit this now? <laughs> it was great, but it was a win for him and yes. he's making payments and and she's getting her thing taken care of, and it's, so it's, it's a win for everybody. I love it. And and so just so the listeners understand, I'm going to break this down because it's brilliant. It's creatively financed twice. Yes. So not only did I ask you to share one seller finance story, it ended up being a double, like a two scooper, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so for those of you listening, here's exactly, this is, this is what's so cool about it. And I love how you just broke it down too that the bank wins, you win, and wins, and this uh, buyer wins. Four people were able to win in the ability of you creatively structuring a property to help four people. You didn't just help one, you helped four. And you're one of the four, which is great. That's why we do this. We want to help people, but we also need to make a living. So, Anne's facing foreclosure. There's not enough time to sell the house on the market because it typically takes 30 days to 45 days to close a real estate transaction on the retail market. If the bank is going to foreclose in the auction, let's say next week, there's just no time you're going to lose the house to the auction. So, so Nate saves this lady's credit history, saves her from the headache of having to go through the foreclosure. There's the first save. She leaves the current loan in place. Nate brings that $50,000 she's behind to make her current. So now you've saved the bank from having to foreclose because they just got their money, not from Ann, but from you. So that's the second person you helped. Now you remodel the home, make it nice, um, take all the stuff out that you mentioned that you took out, and then you turn around and are able to help a gentleman who couldn't get a loan now be a homeowner. There's the third person you help. And you leave Ann's mortgage in place that Anne had to finance hypothetically this other gentleman. Now you're the middleman, so it's a, you're paying that and he's paying you, which is where you make a nice cash flow in the middle. Brilliant. And then the fourth person you help, of course, is you because now you're getting cash flow in the middle and this gigantic equity spread when that day comes where the guy is able to refinance out of Anne's loan and into his own. Anne's credit's being re uh, readdressed, refixed, I guess, because she obviously was a year and a half behind, but now she's current. So her credit score is working way up. I mean, that is like when you say a win, 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 win. Yeah, quadruple win. <laughs> quadruple and I'll, I'll win. mention there was one other person that went because I coach people in doing exactly this. Okay. And the guy that brought this deal to me, that brought you know, and was following up with Anne all yeah. this time. We worked together. I showed him how to do it. He learned. And now we're splitting the profit, this $110,000 profit. With, <laughs> That's with, so cool. With this, uh, this guy that I'm coaching. That is so cool. Guys, so really, really, really an advanced, this is really an advanced real estate type of strategy, but brilliant, as you can see. Five winners all in this scenario. <laughs> I love it. I freaking love it. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, it's nightmare story time um, where, and Nate, the reason we have the nightmare story um, is because I've had lots of nightmares in my real estate career. <laughs> I was talking to uh, a friend of ours, I'll mention him later, uh, and, and uh, he was like, uh, well, do you want today's nightmare story or the worst one that's happened so far this year? <laughs> If you're in real estate, you had a nightmare story, right? And so the reason we have this is because I like to share my nightmare stories and the lesson I learned so that other people don't have to learn from my mistakes. It's kind of like parenting. We tell our, we teach our kids our nightmares of life so they don't have to go through those, right? And so when we come back, you're not going to want to go away. We are going to take a commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to have Nate share with us his nightmare story. So stay tuned. Did you know this mattress is awesome, dude? Love it. <laughs> Perfect. So yeah. Are we doing well time wise? Like oh, super going good. on too long? Or no, super good. Super good. Um, take as long as you want for the nightmare story. We leave about 15 minutes open. Some people tell it in four. Not a big deal. If it turns out to be four minutes or 15 minutes. Um, we adapt very easily because we've got these last questions here that basically make that difference. So, 
Yeah, whatever, however comfortable you want to be. Um, and then after the Nightmare Story, no matter how long or short it is, we'll take one more commercial, and that's when we'll come back and tell, uh, talk about how people can get in touch with you and your book. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's great. So another commercial break after the Nightmare Story? Correct, okay. correct, yep, yep. So, um... Oh, here we go. Uh, so, and then if we need to, a third commercial break, but we rarely take a third. Um, the third one is if we run out of, like, I've had one guest that was so short on words that we had to take a third. Okay, here we go. All right, guys, we are back. You are listening to K Talk Radio, 1640 AM. This is the show, Utah Home Sweet Home. I am your guest, and I am actually your host. <laughs> I'm your guest, Nate Lambert. <laughs> We've got the host today, Yoshi Shiraki, <laughs> in the studios. I said that backwards. Um, and it is time for the nightmare story. So, Nate, if you don't mind diving into the nightmare story, please, I would love to hear the lessons that were learned through this experience. Awesome. I've got a, I've got a real juicy one for you, if that's Ooh, okay. Yes, like juicy ones. Yeah, and, and it kind of goes along the same thing we theme we've been talking about with creative financing. So awesome. Um, there was a guy. Uh, I'll just call him Joe. Okay. And, and Joe was was behind on his mortgage. Okay. And this guy was a drug user. I mean, he used uh, crack cocaine. Wow. He was also a hoarder. Mm. Okay, so he had. You know, I, I'm uh, I'm not joke. I'm not exaggerating when there, I say there. It was like stacked five, six feet up in the air, like wow. all this stuff. Wow. In his house. Yeah. And you know, so he was in a really bad situation, and I got called in again. I I coach so many people. Yeah. And so sometimes I'm dra I'm pulled in at the last minute to save a deal and, and make something happen. Right. So they said, Hey, this guy's ready to go. This was Friday, right? And yeah. He said, He's going into the the auctions on Monday, so we gotta do something like right away. And this was Friday. I'm like, okay, well let's uh, yeah. let's get him in. Let's go to the title company. Let's let's. So literally, you know, we're going, and I'm I'm negotiating this deal with him. Yeah. And um, it, it, and so we go to the title company to close, right? Cause I'm like, right. We, we gotta. If I'm gonna catch you up, he was behind thirty five thousand. So I'm like, if I'm gonna send the bank 35 grand. Like, yeah. We need to have like a contract written and signed and, and recorded by the title company. Yeah. Otherwise I'm exposed and he could be like, oh, thanks for catching me up. Yeah. See you later. Right. Right. Changed so, my mind. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, I knew how important that was. So yeah. we go to the title company and this, Yoshi, this was a, uh, this was nuts because not only was he on crack and, and he was also like an abusive husband and his wife was like, there's no way we're selling this. Like, Whoa. she was like getting in the middle, and it was nuts. Like, so I was, we were sitting at the title company, like for three hours, like going back and forth. We were trying to get the payoff. We were, I was ne negotiating behind the scenes with the wife. I'm like, okay, how about I'll get you a little extra behind the. Yeah. I, you won't. He won't know. I'm gonna yeah. get you a little extra <laughs> money here. Like, where? So I had to like be this mass negotiator, like at the last minute. Right. And um, so we f literally, it, it it was like the time because I had a relationship with the, this title company. I'd done a lot of deals there. They were so nice. They stayed open till seven. Oh wow. We still didn't have everything done. And negotiated, so literally we sh they they showed up on a Saturday for me. Oh my gosh! I'll never for I'll never forget that they did this for me. So yes. They show up on Saturday, so we I negotiate, negotiate. Finally, like we come, they, we get them both to sign, get the wife to sign, him to sign. Yes. And he was like kind of drugged out, and like, uh, and he was and he was actually in his full uh, uh, frame of mind, frame of mind yeah. at the time. But he was, you could tell there were some effects of drugs. Yes. <laughs> from the past. Right. Anyway, so close Saturday, I'm like, sweet. I'm like, I need to get this money to the bank. Like, the the auction was at 9.30. And I, you know, oh, man. right when the bank, my bank opened, I sent a wire in at yeah. 9 o'clock. And, you know, because we had to get this thing off the auction block, right? Right. So I'm like, I send the wire, like, right at 9 a.m. sharp. And then I am on the phone with the, the bank's lawyers. And I'm like sending emails i'm talking to like every last little yes. bank official like i am like going crazy <laughs> trying to get them to stop the auction right. and guess what happened yoshi what happened 
they didn't stop the auction. Oh no! They sold the house to someone else. Oh at man! The auction. Like I sent five emails that you know they threw me up the chain of command. Yes. And uh, it was a mess, but um, so so I was super discouraged. And then you know I'm like, man, we did all this stuff and we didn't get this house. And the title company went out on Saturday. Title, yeah, I mean we pulled out all the stops. Yeah. But here's the here's the exciting news. So yes. we, <laughs> you bought two the days <laughs> later. <laughs> no, two <laughs> days later. I think because I had sent so many emails of like my, you know, yes. my wire wire, um, you know, notifications and everything. Like, and, yeah, there was so much of a paper trail yes. that I had actually caught this up before the auction happened that they actually. Undid the sale. No, and I know the guy that bought it. So Way. <laughs> so they undid the sale and gave it to me like two days later. So like I went from you know being at top of, uh, high as a kite when we finished negotiations to bottom of the barrel when yeah. you know when they sold to someone else back to the top of the yeah you know, when, when 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 they gave it to me right. Yeah. The story doesn't end there. Okay? Oh my god. So it gets even better. So literally. This guy, you know, we gave him like 30 days to get his crap out. But yeah. I mean, he's got a lot of crap, I mean. Yeah. And he was like on drugs, you know. And yep. So, uh, we gave him some money, and he, I think he took all that money and just put it right into his veins, you know. Oh, like, no, yeah. So he was like just sitting on his pile of crap, you know, taking all his drugs into him. Right. And then, uh, so he was out, he wasn't doing anything to move out, and... Uh, his dad got involved and his dad was like threatening to sue us and we're like oh my gosh this is insane yes so <clears throat> so finally we had we had we ended up having th we, we filed the evictions and everything yeah finally we went in and they had three police officers like going in Whoa. this guy was thre threatening to commit suicide I mean it was it was so messy wow uh, but I got the dad on, on my side, and, yeah. and we got these three police officers, and they escorted this guy out of his house. Wow. And then we had, I'm not joking, we had um, 17 dumpsters full. Holy cow. 17 dumpster fulls of huh. just stuff. I think my record's six. Yeah. <laughs> 17? I know. It was insane. And, you know, we... Um, we put it in a place where he could come and get the stuff if yeah. he wanted to, you know, so we tried to be fair with him. And then yeah. we also had, like, the contract. I mean, it was, like, gross, like, dead cats. I think there were four dead cats. Oh, jeez. And uh, so that was that was a, another wild ride, getting him out. Wow. Yeah, and then we put it on. We finally, like, fixed it up. We got it on the market, and then it didn't sell. Like, mm -hmm. didn't sell, didn't sell. Like, what's going on? It's like a nice rehab. Yeah. And so, um, then uh, all of a sudden, out of the blue, it was like spring hit. Yeah. And like, we had like four offers in, in, nice. in a 24 hour period. Out of the blue. Wow. We made 101 grand. Wow. So it was like, it was had a lot of nightmare elements yes. in there, right? Yes. With the, but it was, it was. <laughs> The craziest, most thrilling, exciting deal of my life. <laughs> Seriously. We overcame the nightmares to just have a, an incredible home run hit. That is fantastic. How did you find out two days later that you're getting it back? Did you just keep following up with more emails or did you, you were like, okay, I'm done, I lost it. And then all of a sudden you got an email saying, hey, it's actually yours. Yeah, I just got an email saying. No way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. The the guy who bought it at auction, do I know him? I think so. <laughs> You'll have to tell me later. <laughs> that is a really cool story. <laughs> fantastic. Wow. So that's amazing. So I've had a couple of those where I purchased a home from a landlord. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, two, the two I'm thinking of, that I purchased a home from a landlord and then had to evict the tenant because they refused to leave. Both of those scenarios, one was the mother and her son hadn't paid her rent in over a year and he, she was trying to help him. And so she told me, I didn't have the heart to evict my own son so I'm selling the house because I can't keep the house. I'm, make, I'm, pay, I'm paying his mortgage and my mortgage and he's supposed to be paying me rent. I helped him buy the house. 
So one was a mother to a son, and the other one was a son to a father. The son um, was renting it to his dad, and his dad hadn't paid him rent in like a year. And so the son's like, same thing. He's like, I don't have the heart to evict my dad, but I can't afford to keep paying his house. So the, the father, the son sold it to us, and we had to evict the father. So I know what that's like. It's not a... It's not a fun experience to show up with the with the sheriffs and you're telling someone they've got to now leave. I, I usually, you know, uh, well, I'm, we, the sheriff tells me, don't get out of the car, stay in the car. I was like, yeah, happily, I don't plan on getting out of the car <laughs> until he's gone. <laughs> so, yes, I, I could visualize all of this. Three sheriffs showing up to the house, that, and that's amazing. So, okay, very cool. Thank you for sharing that, Nate. <laughs> Uh, we are going to take another commercial break, and then when we come back, we are going to ask Nate how you guys can, one, get in touch with him. Um, as you mentioned, he coaches a lot of people in the world of real estate, and so, you know, maybe we talked earlier about uh, taking uh, the whole analysis of to paralysis and taking action. Maybe you just need somebody to help you take some action. So, we will be back shortly. Don't go anywhere, and stay tuned. Sweet. Dude, that's awesome. a lesson. That's a great story. Great story, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. So, let's see here. Um, now we're going to jump into your traveling after you. We'll talk about your book and then we'll start talking about travel. Easy and innocent way. To help children understand and learn how is your family listening? Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> they love me though, you know. Yeah, of course. <laughs> My wife never listens. <laughs> I'm on every Saturday. She never listens. <laughs> so you're doing this every Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So. But you're also traveling around, like doing coaching, or not? Not no last year. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. the whole COVID, of course, has made that really hard. Um, but I was, I was probably two years ago. I was probably once a month in some random city. Um, all right, here we go. All right, guys, you are listening to K Top Radio, sixteen forty AM. This is the show, Utah, home sweet home. I am your host. Yoshi Shiraki. Our special guest is Nate Lambert. Guys, we have been talking a lot of cool stuff um, from creative financing to building a business. And if you've missed any part of the show and definitely want to hear it, you can go to our website, utahhomesweethome.com. And if you scroll down to the very bottom of the first page, actually any of the pages, you'll see the social media links. And then you can click on the YouTube link. We post all these shows on our YouTube channel. So feel free to shoot on down there. If you've got any questions, you can submit them through the website, send us an email, give us a call. Um, Nate, how can our listeners get in touch with you if they want to get involved? Yeah, that's a great question, Yoshi. So I have a website, investwithnatelambert.com. Nice. And, and here, I got a special offer for your listeners. Ooh, that, thank you. You know, I, I actually just completed my book where I get into the, all the details about how to do these deals on seller finance, how to use someone else's mortgage, Yeah. right? You don't even have to qualify for a bank loan. You can do it all creatively. Yes. Right? So yes. I'm going to show you how to get find those deals, how to fund them, how to raise money, how to like crush it with financial freedom so that you can travel the world. I know we're going to talk about it yes. here in a minute. Yes. And so, you know, if you go, if they go to investwithnatelambert.com yes www.investwithnatelambert.com there's a you can go ahead and click on the the link to get a free copy of an electronic copy of my book awesome my book is called active life passive income achieve financial freedom through real estate investing love it so that your listeners can jump on today and get a free copy of this book and if you if you want to go the distance and learn more about working with me one on one, um, there's some information on the website as well. You can connect with me and we book a time to chat with me on my calendar. I'd love you know I've helped over 180 people in 46 different states. Nice. 
So nice. They take deep deals, and some some of them have done forty plus deals. Wow. So yeah, I've, I've helped a lot of people attain financial freedom in their lives. And That's awesome. I'd love to be a resource for your listeners as well. Nate, thank you so much. That's a great opportunity, guys. If you are listening, definitely don't pass this up. Invest with NateLambert.com. Go over there, get the book, start taking some action, read. You know, you might just be two years away from quitting your nine to five, just like Nate. You know what I mean? And so if you are tired of working your nine to five, having a boss, and you want some freedom, definitely entertain. You know, real estate's provided that for myself, obviously for Nate, and a lot of our SOI, sphere of influence friends that we both know. And um, I think it's a phenomenal tool to be able to live life to the fullest. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I've helped dozens of people now to quit their jobs. And some people love what they're doing. Sure. They want to make some sweet passive income on the side. Yep. I show you how to get rentals through credit partners, through seller finance, through house hacking. Yes. There's so many ways to build your empire one house at a time. Yes. And I'd love to help you with that at investwithnatelambert.com. Awesome, awesome. Okay, Nate, um, I want to dive into this book that you're offering a little bit. So you mentioned that you're going to, in the book, you share how to find, how to fund, all these kind of tips in there. Do you mind just sharing like one tip on, let's say, how to find these, just so the listeners have an idea of like, oh my gosh, this is the content in the book, I better go get it. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I mean, there's five, I, I share five top ways to find deals. Because nice. finding the deals is so important. I have some software that helps you find, here's the, here's the key, Yoshi. It's okay. not about going on the internet and looking on the, on the MLS. That's not the place to find it. So I have some software that I can help you identify off-market deals. People like these individuals I was talking about, yes. Ann and Joe who are in a bad situation, need some help, and there's even ways that you can send them mailers, you can go knock on their door, you can decide yourself, yeah. or, or give them a call, yes. you can decide what contact method you're most comfortable with, and I have like an individualized plan that I do with people that says, all right, here's, what, here's the different ways to find them, what way works best for you, for your schedule, for your level of comfort. Right. There's so many ways to do it, and uh, I'd love to set an individualized game plan with you. That is fantastic. I love that. I love that. I love how you said mailers. I do mailers. Um, you know Josh Christensen, right? Yes. Uh, obviously you do. I know you do. <laughs> it's funny because I get Josh's mailers all the time. <laughs> and, and for those that are listening, I used to sit in a desk in an office that was like five feet away from Josh. So I'd bring the mailers to the office and like, Josh, I'm not selling my house here. <laughs> uh, but that's hilarious. It's a great way to find deals. It is. So, okay, awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, now guys, here's what I'm, what I'm excited to go into our next topic, which is world traveling. Because Nate, through all his investing, has figured out a system that he doesn't even have to be in the United States. <laughs> not just not in Salt Lake City, he is most of the time not even in the United States. So just to, just to give the listeners an idea, do you mind sharing, I don't know, two, three, four of your top favorite places you've traveled in the world? And if they are U.S. cities, that's great, but just the top cities that you've enjoyed. Oh yeah, so I think Thailand was one of my favorite trips. Ooh, I nice. was there for three and a half weeks. Wow. Um, at the end, yeah, it was just a whole new world over there. At the end of the trip, we went to Cambodia, and we dug some, we paid to, for people to dig some wells. Nice. So I'm involved in a lot of humanitarian work. Nice. Um, with this uh, company called Vision Cambodia, a nonprofit group, a, a foundation. Oh, cool. So we went and built, some, you know, uh, paid for a school, and helped to, to, to see, you know, these these wells that give clean water to these villages. Very nice. So that was that was probably one of the most meaningful trips ever. But I've also, you know, some of my other favorite places are um, went to Cuba. Wow. That was really unique. Yes. No and, kidding. And we lived in Fiji for seven months. Wow. So after I got that profit on that <clears throat> first house, yes. I actually... The hundred and nine thousand. I'm like, oh, let's uh, let's go. My wife and I just decided to go live in Fiji for seven months. So we sold 
ever, our car and everything we own. <laughs> That's fantastic. And we relocated and had the adventure of our lives just like every weekend just going out on fun explorations. And I love it. We were actually uh, featured on House Hunters International. I was about to just ask you that. When you said Fiji, it rung a bell. I was like, weren't you on House Hunters? Yes. <laughs> So I got to, and, and here's the funny thing about that show yeah. is it's all staged, as you probably realize. Like, yeah. you know, we had bought the bought the house like four months previously. So, uh -huh. so they actually came with a moving truck and moved all our stuff out so that we could film the, the shots where we <laughs> pretended like it was our first time there. Whoa, yeah. what about this house? <laughs> right. So yeah, and then they moved it all back. It was it was it was crazy, but it That's was awesome. It was a great experience to be on that show. Heck and, yeah. Uh, and just uh, living the dream, going, living abroad, not just traveling, but living somewhere for a long yes. time. Yes. I, I try to go places for, you know, we went to Greece for four weeks, Greece and Russia last summer, and yeah. went to India for, in the Maldives for three and a half weeks. I, I try and really have extended vacations. I love that. So that I can really immerse myself in the culture, not to mention the time zone changes are nuts. So oh, yeah. Stay for a long time. Love that. Nate, and just to show it the listeners, you bring your whole family, which you've got children at four? Five, Five. boys. <clears throat> Five boys. boys. Yep. Gotcha. So Nate isn't just traveling the world with him and his wife. They're bringing the whole family. What an experience for one, your boys, and two, for the family as a whole. I mean, that is like quality bonding time that I think most parents wish they could have. Oh yeah, I mean, on one of those trips, we make more memories than a lot of people do in their whole life. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's so much fun just uh, getting out and being with the kids and spending that quality time. Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. So, you've done all this great traveling. You do a lot of it. I've seen you post how you've got, you know, you've learned tips along the way on traveling. Do you mind sharing? Let's say somebody's out there going, dude, I want to go to India for four weeks. I want to go to Greece. I want to go to Russia. I want to go to Cuba. What are some tips that, let's say, if your sister, brother, sibling, I don't know if you have a sister or brother, so your sibling, uh, came to you and says, Nate, I want to go here. Can you help me plan this trip? Any tips that you could share with the listeners on how to do that? Yeah, absolutely. So... You know, I, I was traveling the world even when I was a poor professor because I got creative. I figured out how to do it. Nice. So there's, um, sometimes you might have to exchange a little bit of privacy. Yeah. But uh, we would always rent out our house on Airbnb while we were gone. Oh. And that would actually fund a lot of our vacation, right? Yeah. So that's one tip. Yeah. You list your own house, you know, take the valuables to another place. And yeah. List it, and then what we would also do is we there's this website called HomeExchange.com. Okay. Where you can offer up your house in exchange for someone else's house. Oh. So we live we stayed in Hawaii for five weeks. We had a five week house and car exchange. No in way. Hawaii. The whole trip was like seven hundred bucks. Wow, and they come in your and they stay in your house. Yep, and we use our car and we use their car and. Stay in their house. That's fantastic. And I got to do that in New Zealand, you know, so yeah. and Costa Rica. Wow. So literally, like, I was doing this, and, like, I didn't even have to pay for accommodations because I was trading, just trading and, and willing to do give up a little bit of, uh, you know, the comfort of having someone stay at my own house. But yeah. Being able to stay at their house. And actually, two of those three didn't even end up staying at my house. No I got, way. I got literally a free <laughs> accommodations in Wellington, New Zealand, and... And uh, Costa Rica. Amazing. Yeah. Why didn't they stay? I don't know. Maybe their plans changed or something like that. <laughs> That's so amazing. They thought they were going to stay, but they didn't. So I just had a free place. Wow. Wow. And do these happen? Just curious. Uh, obviously, Salt Lake is a winter attraction city. Do these happen during the winter? I mean, you're going to Hawaii in the winter. They're coming here to ski. Is that how? Is that kind of what? How would you? Yeah. Uh, yep. I like we go. We celebrate Christmas like a week early, uh, and then we'll take off before school even gets out, and got just it. go s spend three and a half weeks like wow in a different country. Wow, that's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, that's a great point. So you've got kids that are getting. Are you homeschooling or, or just no? I'm just uh, you know last year. So last year we spent three months on family vacation, Yoshi. Yeah, wow. But we did all that with them only missing like nine days of school. 
Wow. So we just took advantage of the breaks that they had. Yeah. Did a lot in the summer and over Christmas. Got it. And like, you know, during some of the fall and spring breaks and stuff, uh, and we just went and Yeah. Went. You you go away every Christmas, actually. Now that you every say that, Christmas, it's just clicked yeah. that I've seen you away out of the country somewhere every Christmas on your Facebook. Yeah, Russia. That's, that's was how the last I, one, right? Well, actually, yeah, we went to Russia in the summer, but oh, okay, yeah, okay. the last one was India in the Maldives. That's right, that's right. In our over the water bungalow, but yeah. Wow, very cool. Okay, so I, I would love to, we, we've got about a minute left on the show here, and You've got a strong mindset. Mindset to me is like a muscle. If you don't work it out, it doesn't get strong. Some people don't have a strong mindset, you know, from the get-go, and some people do. You look at LeBron James. He was obviously born with a strong body. Uh, you know, it was like a man in, in high school, and some people are not. You obviously have the mindset of a strong individual. Any tips that you can give to our listeners to strengthen their mindset for those who need it? We all need it, but for those who need it more. Yeah, I think it's all about what you start, how you start in the morning. I do a miracle mindset routine every day. So I have a treadmill in my office, and I have my vision board with, you know, places I want to go, things I want. Yes. Up that I'm looking at as I'm running, and I'm doing meditation after I look at the vision board. I, I do some meditation as I'm jogging, and then... I have affirmations that I shout out every day, and that gives me confidence. It gives, it programs my mind yes. for success. Yes. And it's it's such a powerful routine that just so I recommend to everyone to have a miracle morning start out it. in a strong way. Very cool. I love that miracle morning. I've actually never heard that term. Did you make that up? There's or? a book called Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. Yeah. I need to read it. I need to read that book. Wonderful. Well, Nate Lambert, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. What a fun conversation. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing with all the listeners. My pleasure. This has been awesome. I'd love to work with you at Nate, investwithnatelambert.com. And thanks for inviting me, Yoshi. It's, you, I, you're, you did something like this like years ago. I watched your interview with Andy McFarland. And oh, thank you. That helped launch my real estate career. So. I thank you so much for helping me to get started, brother. I appreciate that. I appreciate you, Nate. Thank you so much. Awesome, guys. Well, I hope everybody has a spectacular rest of the day.